Welcome back here to Laurel Park, at least back for me anyway. I was over at Cannon for the Cause over at Pimlico on mm -hmm. Sunday, but Keith, how did you manage without me? I was off Sunday as well. You were? So, That's so right, you were. We're going to have to check with, I guess, Tim and Dave and whoever else was here. The but, gang. Uh, yeah, the whole gang. I think Forrest stepped in, right? Forrest did step Forrest in. Forrest, uh, for, uh, Forrest uh, is my Sunday. backup right now. Yeah. She stepped in for me uh, while I was out Sunday. But a happy Breeders' Cup Day. Mm -hmm. We had Maryland Million a couple of weeks ago. That was Maryland's day of racing, and now we have the World's Day of Racing here over in Lexington, Kentucky at the beautiful mm -hmm. Keeneland race course. And we'll touch in a little bit on that. I've got some picks up for today. If you go to first.com slash bet and get in there, I've got some picks for you today for the whole card for Friday, mm -hmm. Keith. But right. let's take a look back here in Maryland at Laurel Park. Let's take a look at that track. We've got the track is fast and the turf is firm today. A, a nice, a nice weather keep that we're having for today should be it should be a nice go around. Yeah, you, you asked before the show, can we stretch this out a little yes. bit? <laughs> and uh, yeah, we're gonna try. I mean, the next six to eight days look pretty good. So uh, yeah, we're we're in for a treat here with the weather. So we usually don't get this. The, it's cooperating. The turf course is in very good shape still. So uh, yeah, we're gonna ride it out. Till it bucks Let's right? Exactly. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to be seeing a couple of more of these days with some good or softer turf, but that's I don't think that's going to be a case uh, this weekend. we got some wonderful weather coming up, including today here on Friday. And with that said, let's start off this nice nine race mm. card that we have, Keith. Yeah. A, a nice setup that we have. Uh, well done to the racing office for setting up a nice card here to kick off this Breeders' Cup weekend of racing, starting off with this mile and eighth maiden 45 on the turf for the girls three to five years old and we both land on number six this is my price play still at five to one mm -hmm. right now we'll see how that lands up but self-assured for rodney jenkins sheldon russell on top yeah i mean these cars just continue to be a challenge day in and day out offering you know an abundance of chances of, at big payouts uh big scores for the fans so really dive in it's a little it's a little tricky, kind of work. Got to work your way through it. You got to spread your money out thing. a little bit. But yes. uh, man, again, I, I'm going to kind of get you started here. You're on the same horse, five to one, self-assured. Rodney Jenkins going to have to buck a little trend here, over 23 in these turf races of recent note. But uh, However, I like the return for this five-year-old mare. Lightly raced, but a big, big effort should be tuned up. We've got video of that last race, correct? We do. Yeah, we do. of October the 16th. Here at lovely Laurel Park, and it wasn't the easiest of trips, Callie. No. Uh, breaking from the seventh post in a, in a field of tennis, hung about three and four wide down the backside, and going a little bit of a slower pace. A battle kind of ensues, uh, leaving the far turn. Really good ride here by Victor. Victor, though. I mean, Man. he he had to be so patient. He yep. was ready. Then he got sorry, Keith. Yep. He was ready. Then he got closed off. Then he had to make a couple of different turns. Victor Carrasco out in a little bit indefinitely right now, but comes out, gets clear, really starts getting going. What I like about this horse is that due to that traffic, this horse showed a little bit mm -hmm. of that turn of foot prior to what he shown last time out. I, hey, listen, I, I think two back. Jenkins said Victor or Jenkins or Aveline said just send this horse. Let's see what. We can get out of him for mm -hmm. the first time off of the layoff and then coming back conserved him a little bit gave us a little bit of effort Rodney Jenkins three for 11 second after the layoff lately six for 11 in the money mm -hmm. so that's not bad either as well Sheldon Russell uh, is going to be picking up nicely where Victor left off with this horse I think yeah uh, um, yeah Sheldon off of this one luminous for Brittany Russell will be ridden by Lynch correct so but Lynch, I, he's I, normally I, ridden yeah by. yeah so I, I think self-assured yeah that little change of tactics the ability really game that was another Russell first time LASIK first time mm -hmm. Russell horse last time annihilated we kind of sustained that wide bid to get the better of self assured but he, she continued well uh, to the wire luminous you know plays the bridesmaid role really really well right six seconds out of ten starts three thirds right. knocking on the door turning back in distance will circle and I'm sure make a run from the back of the pack I think pace factor certainly goes to the inside I'll let you talk about birthday time from the rail sure. coming in for Joe Sharp birthday time for the rail but luminous seven for 18 from that Delaware to Laurel ship okay as well as so just looking at the in the money let's let me do some quick math 15 for 18 in mm -hmm. the money from Delaware to Laurel so okay. luminous is uh, uh, pretty, pretty solid, but birthday time on the rail for Joe mm -hmm. Sharp. Uh, I'm looking at what kind of ride Toledo is going to be giving this horse. And with that being said, the turf, the two back on the turf, which means the Saratoga run on the 19th of August, mm -hmm. that's the kind of ride I think Toledo is going to be giving this filly for Joe. And then you do have Joe, who is well 25% from that dirt, dirt to turf. There's a 
The only thing I have against this horse is that if you go to back, unruling in the gate mm -hmm. has a little bit to overcome. This one post will be a little bit difficult, which is why I think they're going to send a little bit yeah. uh, with, I, and that's why I think Toledo will fit this horse so well. Just be in that perfect position, whether he stays on the rail right behind the pace setter or just gets off the rail a little bit. I think if they get off the rail oh. a little bit, it'll help birthday time out a little she bit. She comes out of key races up there on those Saratoga turf races. Miss Bonnie T an allowance winner at the Meadowlands with a buyer in the low 80s. Uh, the horse prior to that in that race that winter uh, July 20th so took it came back to run some big figs so yep. she keys up against the right right kind yeah the day she kind of was a little unruly to gate she expended a little bit of energy and had to chase a quicker flow I don't think it's going to be that demanding hence I think she's going to stay a trip here for Joe Sharp Nice. You okay. also have Commander Buzzkill, yeah. Tom Marley, Don't Forest Boys. That That's a great matchup. This horse is coming from Christoph Clem or coming from the Clement over in France, mm -hmm. and it goes from mm -hmm. the Clement in France over to Thomas Morley, uh, Forest Boys, nine for mile and eighth. That's going to time that really well. Uh, Lope de Vega. Second time on the turf, 22% yeah. hitting at that, 4 for 18. That's going to help out. Royal applause, the damn sire, 27%, 4 for 15. Second time on the turf with these American turf runners uh, so far. So I think that's going to set up yeah. nicely as well. Looks like they're kind of trying to sneak down here, maybe find a little softer spot. They, they think. Lasix goes on. Yeah, sure. and uh, certainly shouldn't be short off the mile in 5 right. race over there in France. And a horse out of that race came back to run third in a smaller stake. So right. uh, probably face the right kind. Maybe a step sideways or maybe a little step down for the class of for, for Commander Buzzkill. I like that name. Uh, certainly could be <laughs> making that run a grinding run from off the pace. A nice grinding mm -hmm. run from off the pace is exactly I think what we're going to see from Commander Buzzkill. Okay. But let's go ahead to the start of the early pick four, mm -hmm. Keith. You've got a ticket, of course, lined up for the day. How do you play it? Yeah. <laughs> Love it. it. Just, I, I hope we can get to race five. I mean, <laughs> I've got to go too deep. You're looking at a $200 ticket when I start looking at these races. So too deep uh, in races two, three, and four. We'll be quick. Six, eight with three, seven with three, four. Race five. Uh, there you go. That's that turf race. A mile and an eighth, two in life. Man. You got to go wide on that around. race. One, Absolutely. two, four, six, nine, ten. Star shopping. We'll have a bit of that one. That's going to be my top selection. I think offer some value. There you go. Twenty-four dollars. The early pick four ticket. Twenty-four dollars. Uh -huh. He keeps you keep it at twenty-four dollars for the most part. So that was a sol I, This is a solid ticket for that early pick four, especially with the way everything plays out. Ladies and gents, this is a day to go wide mm -hmm. as you can on some of these spots if you're doing a ticket today, uh, especially in in this claiming ten. Never, never win three six furlongs on the dirt. It's interesting enough. You uh, talk to me about free square yeah. on top because I'm having. I have a. I think everything needs to go his way, regardless at what level this horse is at. Yeah, uh, there's there's going to be flow. And you look at him, you think, well, he maybe he needs to lead. But uh, with a horse who is outside in Golden Aviator, nobody seems to kind of get past him early, right? He right. likes to go. Uh, but can he last the trip? Maybe an inflated number off that sloppy sealed surface, uh, or muddy sealed surface, I should say, at Delaware. He's going to have some company, though. Pit stop man from the rail. Uh, what yep. say you? Uh, my buddy Lad needs a handler. What I liked about Free Square's last race is that he encountered a little trouble uh, heading to about the half mile pole, had to yep. steady a little bit, then was wide. And I liked the kind of grind that he kept giving through the final three sixteenths of a mile. I think he can stay close if he avoids any problems into the turn, Callie. Chase, 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 and maybe the field just slowly comes back and he's willing enough to get over the top here. It looks like the number's hedging back in the right direction. I agree with that. I really like that effort last time out when he didn't, he really didn't get his way and he was able to overcome that a mm -hmm. little bit. He was down at the right level to be able to do that. So let's see how the trip goes for him. He gets, he's going to be getting a better trip than he did last time out mm -hmm. without question. So, but still do things need to go his way? We're about to find out mm -hmm. uh, once that site, once the gates pop open for that second race, I go with Golden Aviator on top. Okay. You have Mikey Gorham, seven for 30, winning two in a row mm -hmm. as of lately uh hit when him and john avello team up mm -hmm. 23 for 39 in the money yeah eight for 39 win percentage that this is your outside speed horse which is i think he's going to get the biggest advantage of doing that and on top of that going through some of his gate speed especially in those last two efforts if he keeps that gate speed from the last two efforts he's on the lead 
uh, within this field today, I think. Okay. We're going to see if he can last. The show me is what I kind of like to say about this horse. Okay. Uh, he got the lead. He was clear Timonium and couldn't get it done. Maybe he gets it done here. I'm going to. I'm not going to use him as a shorter price, maybe slightly uh, underneath. But I think Lad needs a handler, has a little bit of a rating gear as well. So if Golden Aviator wants to go ahead and say, which he will, he'll try to go clear. I think Lad needs a handler. Third off a break is an improved type here, can sit and make a move into it. Well, on top of that, he's going to be having some outside speed to contend with, and this yeah. horse is super, super game. And he's mm -hmm. been super game ever since coming back in the Tim Salzman barn, which you and I both like for this yep. horse yep. as well. But let's go ahead to race number right. three, this allowance five and a half here on the turf. Keith, you go with Prince Pear on top, mm -hmm. and I was battling back and forth. Uh, you decide to go with Prince Pear. I, I like the horse, but I need to be sold on him a little bit more. Well, I, I just think these horses have all taken turns beating each other. Right. They're, they're, they're very familiar with <laughs> each other. Prince Pear, we're uh, going to go third time for Suzanne Sustenius' barn. Uh, she's done well with these turf sprinters of late the last couple of years, like 70% yep. in the money. I think it was a good confidence builder last time out with the cheek pieces, sat a trip. And I, I think he sits another good trip today because you're looking at the flow. Pick and see glass is a price horse for me. He's had issues out of the gate. He's fast enough with a good break to clear and relax and take this field a long way. He's done it in the past. Prince Pear, though, I think will get first run. And the way he was encountered last time and kicked away from that horse right. through the final 16th of a mile, that showed me he's maybe turned the corner, uh, avoids that trouble today and holds on. Right, and it, here, the biggest thing about this horse, though, is that he has such a tight range of performance numbers. It's, it doesn't, there, what's great is that you're going to be getting consistency out mm -hmm. of Prince Pear. You're going to, you're likely going to be seeing that same type of race that you saw last time out, but does this, is this another case of does the horse need things to go his way? Just yeah. a little bit, perhaps a little bit. I'm going with him underneath on the off chance he bounces just a touch. Okay. That's going to be just enough for the number two, in my opinion, to take over by the Seashore. Mike Trombetta, Caramanos, you have mm -hmm. this horse underneath. He gets a, he needs the same, he gets a similar setup to Prince Pear, mm -hmm. but I think he has a lot more to offer as far as variety. Okay. Uh, and I do think with the way Trombetta's turf horses have been going, I could see this horse definitely being one of those turf horses that's mm -hmm. on the upswing a little bit. Certainly. Comes in fresh, and this horse runs well fresh. You go back to his races off the break they're good he's got a good closing kick i think prince fair is a little faster than early he'll try to run my top choice down three seven four two for me two three in six race three. four for me okay. uh etched in stone benny feliciano jr sheldon russell going back he's not the same horse as he was in arlington park mm -hmm. nice effort two back that was from stidham uh it, that's a bit of a price. That's a bit of a price underneath. I think that this horse is going to go a bit higher than six to one, but we'll see what happens. Uh, let's go ahead to race number uh -huh. four, where this starts the Rainbow Pick Six. We have a carryover from this last weekend, sixteen, wow. almost seventeen thousand, mm -hmm. and that's definitely going to be climbing by the time the gates pop open for race number four. I have a ticket that we have lined up and sim bit similar to yours and mine's a bit pricey. It was tough for me to find a single. I didn't want to do a single, but I had to do a single. I land on the number six in race number eight. Like you in race number five, I go wide. I go wide in a lot of these races. I would have loved to go a little bit wider in some of them. But again, I was looking at almost a $200 ticket as well. well had to make some concessions. You run with a crowd that's got a little bit more dough, right? You do know, I, I got, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I've seen you out there. Yeah, yes, I got to hang with my my. my people keep it down around that $24. That's good. It's 54 for this pick six. With that carryover, you've got to invest in it. And yes. don't let it slip away. You know, it's Breeders' Cup Friday. Everybody's kind of attention maybe off of Keeneland. Uh, you're going to be sorely disappointed yep. you miss out exactly. on an opportunity right here uh, at Laurel Park. So it, don't get shut out on that pick six. Race number four, that starts in this claiming 40, never win two, a mile here on the dirt. And we we see this similarly, but in very many different ways. I need to be <laughs> sold on your top. So, like, I like Federal Offense yeah. a lot. I do. Uh, but uh -huh. I'm looking for a couple that are at different prices. We've got a video, actually, on Federal okay. Offense. Marilyn McMullen, Forrest Boyce on top, gets this one turn mile again. Yeah, I, I like the effort. Uh, this horse is now... Uh, just cycling upwards in form, uh, raising up the level from the maiden 12-5, and a good effort for 42 in life. Battled early, shook clear, dropped inside of another rival here and gets engaged. Hachor was a, a longer price, right? But had shown good numbers in the past. It wasn't a real surprise, surprise for Hachor. I think Willard had this horse uh, at a good number. But look at the effort, the fight in federal offense. They've tweaked some things equipment-wise on this horse, and it appears – 
he's poised for another good effort right up close to the lead. I like the fight that he's shown. I think he's got a little bit of a more tactical run than, say, an under-the-radar that's going to be a shorter price uh, for Cesar Nambo coming in out of those uh, open races. But here's a stat to back things up for Marilyn McMullen. Past two years on the dirt, 4 for 17, 33%, 8 for 17, and the money with these conditional claiming type of horses okay. in Maryland. 333, you like that? 333 for your ROI. So Federal Offense just needs to hold form to catch a win or even a piece of this. I, I think he's going to be tough to deny to oh. keep out of the money. Oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Class-wise, I think this is one of the best horses that fits into this race within yeah. this field. Uh, so, th like I said, just going – this horse is going to be finishing, mm -hmm. I think, in your top three or four, as I have noted. Uh, I, I like this horse a lot. But, again, got convinced a little bit by other prices, like the number two, Oro de Moro Moro. So, we've got – this is the perfect type of horse that Farrier is going to claim. It, it, right away, he just kept – I feel like he just kept this horse under wraps once he got the horse in his barn. Anthony Farrier, five for 14 36 percent first time route as a barn trend as well mm -hmm. and you do have you take i need to take a look at this horse once he gets into the paddock and i will and that's going to be my biggest indicator is how is this horse built is this horse too big to be going these shorter distances but this is the first time in the farrier mm -hmm. barn toledo I like that this horse gets the one-turn mile the two turns would have worried me a little bit but this horse is going to give you a hot pace yeah and Farrier is going to sharpen this horse up a little bit where it might be they might try and go away go ahead with it and try and smoke them a little bit trying and get a really contentious lead and try and see how far see how far they yeah. can carry it it's not a lot of like true speed in here it wouldn't Correct. surprise me if they said let's go ahead and get on the engine is right there you know off a 22 and uh, you know change right. paces in Kentucky and showed willingness after dropping back a little bit last time to close the gap late a protect move up to 40. Uh, that's a move that's been good for Ferrier the last few years. 25% when he does this double jump mm -hmm. up in tag. And the lone sibling, so sibling to race has won a couple route races. So the ability to stretch that speed out, I think, is going to work for your top selection. For your top selection, mm -hmm. I go with the number one underneath you. But you, we both go with the number three under the radar, as you touched. Okay. Cesar Nambo, Carol Sedano. I have this horse underneath because uh, when Carol and Cesar – uh, team up together out of the last six times they've teamed up together no wins a second but five thirds okay. so I'm yeah. just kind of going wow. with that trend a little bit there but then with Wonder Water, Ricky Silliman, Angel Cruz they're hitting at 40% in the last 10 runs together gutsy move I think but wants the distance mm -hmm. uh, especially with that last effort again breaking from the maiden going right to here tough ask tough mm -hmm. enough a tough good challenge in this field yeah one hole is going to be – I would have been concerned for the one hole if we didn't have that shoot to cross over. She's going to be on the rail, gets a bit of distance and a bit of – a little bit of that clean mm -hmm. air situation going across the shoot. So I think on a rail horse, coming from behind anyway, it's not really going to make too much of a difference. Okay. Race, race number five is this claiming 16, never went two. A mile and an eighth here on the turf. Keith, you go with the number four, Star mm -hmm. Shopping. And before we got on air, I said this is uh, this is going to be Keith's sneaky price play, I think. I think this horse is going to stay at around that six to one mm -hmm. and come home with some money a little well, bit. Well, I can tell you one thing. In race five, if you take anything less than, like, three to one, uh, not, you know, you shouldn't <laughs> you shouldn't be betting. Uh, that's, that's just not the way to go. I know Cash Rocket's probably going to take – Plenty of play, but there's some definite negatives. There's a for sale sign on this horse. So yes. if, if, if if he wins and beats me, he, he beats me. I'll use him underneath slightly. But okay. star shopping, we'll go to the video September the 7th uh, down south, down at Colonial Downs. It's a good effort here uh, with Gomez aboard, kind of saving ground. And it works its way uh, into the stretch with a really big effort. Part of the mix of run, maybe five, six lengths gain around the turn. And I like the way this horse just keeps going and going and going. The buyer works a 71. Uh, a couple winners come out of there to run really, really big on different surfaces. But I think Star Shopping now going sprint to route and back to the turf is going to be a major player. I thought this horse ran much better than what I thought he was going to run. I was like, why is he running on the dirt here? Maybe right. a little bit of a tightener. Right. Back to the best surface. Okay. Second time gelding. Hello. I think this horse is going to be very difficult. Uh to contend with once they hit about the, the quarter pole home. I think he'll make that move. That sprint should sharpen him up to put him in position to lurk just off the pace. Just off of the pace. I like it. I like everything I'm seeing here. I like that you picked up that it might have been 
a touch up on this horse from coming off of a little bit of that uh, mm -hmm. turf campaign, uh, late summer turf campaign that we've got going on here. I, th I agree with you. I think this okay. horse is set up just the right way. The number 10, as you said, Cash Rocket, uh, which you do not enjoy this horse. I think last time out, giving him a chance, this horse just doesn't seem to like the dirt as much as he likes the turf. No. We'll go, I'm going, giving this horse a chance off of those fairground efforts. Mm -hmm. This horse liked fairgrounds, but fairgrounds was tough. Finally gets back to a nice, better distance. First, when coming off of the layoff, try to go for the dirt. Not a fan of the dirt. Uh, again, you said this horse is for sale, but I'm also thinking end of season, this is where we get yeah. the drops and try and go for the win. Here's a horse that run back in an 83 on the dirt. That one's an A other than around here, right? So I think he's got some okay dirt form off a little poorly last time. But he should have rolled past that field, I thought. So, again, he's going to take plenty of play. Uh, he had a perfect trip off the break for Maiden 30. A substantial drop in the fake. I, I, I don't know. It, you know, if he beats me, he beats me. Okay. Brittany wins a lot, and uh, she does a great job. I just, I, I'm not going to take a shorter price in a race that I think has six, seven options to go. I go I go wide in this race okay. as well. I mean, if I could have gone, I also would have included the number eight, looking for justice underneath. If I could have, uh, looking back at, so J. Ron Barbosa doesn't take the ride, but if you go two back, that was, an, uh, that was the amateur races. Uh, Puts in a nice, stunning, perf puts in a nice performance, uh, goes for a tight spot right near the rail, and then J. Ron Barbosa mm -hmm. gets this horse on the slap, sends it to the front, gets this horse confident. This horse, looking for justice, is going to be coming in confident into this race. If you're looking for a wallop of a price, yeah, be, 30 be to 1, yeah. absolutely. Be higher than that, maybe. Yeah, th yeah, there you go. Okay. That's that kind of race, I think. We'll that, see. It is that kind of race. All right. We'll talk about more of these types of races. We're going to kick off to commercial, but we will be right back to talk about this really, really nice setup rest of the card. rest of the car that we mm -hmm. have for you guys uh, leading up in uh, conjunction with these Breeders' Cup races that we have going on, starting with this Maiden 45 for the boys, strictly two-year-olds, seven furlongs on the dirt. This is going to be a, a little bit interesting. Uh, mm -hmm. You have the seven on top, Keith B. West uh -huh. for Hugh McMahon, Sheldon Russell. This horse stretching out a little bit. I do agree with you. I think this horse is going to be appreciating the distance a little bit better today. Yeah, uh, mine shaft uh, on the top end certainly should handle a little bit more ground. It was when you look up and you see post time, Prince of Jericho, horses have come right. back and run off the screen. Nominated He's up for against stage, the right way. kind. Yeah, but here's the negative. Why in for a tag off of a kind of inspiring debut, I thought. Off a little poorly, leaned in, bounced around at the gate, rushed up into the teeth of a very, very quick pace. This horse kept trying to the wire. Um, in for the tag. This this. If he doesn't run well today, I don't know when he's going to run well again because I think he should, with a clean break, be forward. And he can stay the trip. I, I don't think the flow is going to be as demanding for him today. And that's what kind of intrigued me a little bit, which is why I just have him underneath uh, that. But the mm -hmm. in for the tag perked my attention right away, mm -hmm. uh, which I I wouldn't be surprised if this horse gets taken today as well. Okay. Uh, so – with that being said, putting in, you know, some solid solid works ever, si ever since coming out mm -hmm. of that. W go ahead and give this horse another chance, I would say, especially at 4-1. to one. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. But I go with the number 11, Energy Efficient, mm -hmm. right on the outside for Hammy Smith. This one had – we've got a video spotlight mm -hmm. on this one. Uh, Keith lined up for us. It worked out for me that my horse is on top. But we see this horse on the rail right now behind, uh, uh, behind some battling early speed, Keith. Yeah, behind the speed, uh, was up a little closer early, dropped back some on the turn, and then found more through the final quarter of a mile. This 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 was a good effort. This horse had uh, trouble uh, in its debut, mm -hmm. trouble second time out at Pimlico, and now kind of is finding himself. And he's got a race yes. that they might be scrambling early. You know, post time with some speed, some of these other horses trying to hustle out and get position at the 7-8. Uh, he's bred to handle ground. I, I think he's going to make a run into this. 
I, I agree. I, th he's going back to the sprint, I think, which is better for his sire at work overall, l especially looking at that. Really, that was the com that was the confidence booster he mm -hmm. needed after the first mm -hmm. two rough tr two rough tries that he's had in his racing career. I think last time out, Kendrick also wrapped up on the her horse early too. Back. But as you reiterated, he's going to need to be hustled out a little bit of there quickly. Yeah. And that I think that outside draw is really the biggest key thing that attracts me about this horse. He's going to have that time on the outside post. to He's just gets that room and that space to mm -hmm. really try and get up there a little bit further ahead. Yeah, I think they're going to run away from him a little bit early. I agree. Uh, so you're talking about so that the key is outside your right, not that chance to maybe get shuffled or checking and then kind of really get him off his game mentally. I think he'll settle, la he'll lag back, and then he's going to be probably put to a really strong drive around at three eights. Can he sustain enough, and will this field uh, come back to him is going to be the biggest right. question. Uh, Silver Patron, I used him last time. That was first time blinkers off of a willing rebid two races back. I'll throw a line through the last. i got to come back with him one more time. He's bred to handle an extra uh, – far longer so even a little bit further when you really kind of dig a little deeper into the breeding super accelerates a horse for robin graham it took a lot of play early and the play stayed good good effort right. we talked about caramano's kind of opting for this one over shack in the box that day right. he stays here again shack in the box is going to have to overcome a tough trip down inside he looks like a little bit more ground will, will work but again it, it's hard for these horses that they got to hustle off their feet early to get position right. and then try to Take a deep breath a little bit, and then make that other run. It's not easy, and that that draw for him uh, could be could be pretty difficult to overcome. Which is what makes a maiden seven furlong mm. setup so interesting. I think yeah. uh, to really uh, kind of get things going into the nit nitty gritty of this race card that we have. And with that saying, let's go ahead into race number seven uh -huh. in this allowance, eight, a mile and sixteenth on the turf. I we go in the top four, but I had. Uh, I, I had six horses chosen on this. I, six. I mean, I I could have gone six. I could have gone six okay. wide on this. Right. Uh, the, there's a lot going on here. So <laughs> I think <laughs> uh, we start off with your top selection, who we do have a video on, uh, the number 10 CRISPR, Tim Willie, Charlie yeah. Marquez, just missing out of it last time here in this spot. Kind of kind of just rising up a little bit talent-wise. And uh, gets an okay flow in, in his most recent effort behind a wicked prankster who came right back to win, right? Maryland Million Day. Mm -hmm. and, and got a very good trip. The inside-out trip where you're able to kind of save ground, relax a little bit, sometimes get some cover. And when horses kind of shift out around that 316th pole, they really start to level off, as this one does. Wicked prankster separates a little bit from the other speed challengers, and this horse makes a good run through the last 16th of a mile. You go back two races against by land and sea, and how really good horses that he faced so season animals he's getting better and better in each start and he might have a little bit more of a contentious pace up front with the likes of the two bourbon currency if yep. he comes away cleanly he's going to make things a little bit challenging could be a little bit of a nuisance for horses like i'm going to use uh, in tom hagan exactly. which be home horses yep. like that so i think a little extra ground Maybe a little extra pace involved helps the chances of CRISPR for Tim Woolley. Absolutely. I put Baton underneath or on top as my price play. This horse is coming off. This horse has entered in that starter allowance at Aqueduct. It was an AE scratch. Mm -hmm. uh, Mike Pino, second off of the layoff, comes in in really nice, stunning fashion. Uh, we, we attract Caramanos. For mm -hmm. this call, 24% third after the layoff. I think this horse is just really raring to go. We're going to get to see that same performance. I don't mind the jump up. He ran some nice, efficient enough numbers mm -hmm. to be able to attack this group here a little bit today. So okay. that's my price play at 12 to mm -hmm. 1. But let's go ahead to race number 8, this allowance optional claiming 55. A mile here on the dirt. We've got a stat on your top selection, Famish. Before, actually, before we get into Famish, okay. let's talk about the ho big horse, Cordmaker, yeah. who's 11000 away from a million dollar in earnings. Uh, Victor Carrasco is out. I think we have a video spotlight on Cordmaker, mm -hmm. but we do get uh, Richard Monterey today here in the saddle getting a big chance. Richard Monterey on a pretty good little roll right now, right? So he's, he's had some wins and, and is riding well and, you know, is able to kind of get this mount. This really good opportunity for Monterey. And Huge we're going to go back. Uh, to the last race, right, of uh, the last yes. time we saw General Ford Maker in the General Georgia. Boy, a really good trip. We've seen Victor here, you know, get well, Victor, get get back, and uh, another great trip, right, saving ground, working through inside, and getting the job done Beautiful here with ride. that 98. You look, he's kind of like an omnifig when you really look at things for Cord Maker, but he's never had this kind of a break. 258 days. Yeah, we thought we were going to kind of see him. Uh, unfortunately, was not able to get into the Maryland Million. He's back now. 
It appears to be working very, very well coming into this. Uh, gets a good little positional spot here. He has enough tactical speed to lay close, especially against this group. Can he overcome that break? Uh, he's going to have to be about 95%, I think, to get it done. If he is, he probably does. I've got a little bit of an upset shot here there with the seven. Famish, you're going to use into the mix. Yep. And uh, Horacio Depositor is very well over that sloppy seal track in the shallow. Don had encountered some trouble mid-stretch, had to shift out and really kick back in. But look at this stat. This is, this, <laughs> this is kind of caught my eye. Five for 11, 11 for 11 in the money, second Ooh. off the claim the last few years for Horacio Depositor. 499 is your ROI, uh, can handle this distance. I think it's perfectly positioned. If Locomotive wants to go, he'll kind of get the prompting uh, position here. And uh, the way he held on last time at 7 eighths and then kept on going after trouble uh, really kind of boosts his chances in here for me. I'll take a shot for Famous. There's a slight upset, but yeah, I like that. You're, you're not really you're rooting not, against Gord Maker. You're there, not. Right? But yeah. I, I was – listen – it's you. I was fully expecting to come with a little bit of an underneath price uh, going against Cordmaker. Why not? Why not try and uh, maybe take a stab? Uh, because th if you're going to try and go against Cordmaker, this is the right time to do it off of a long layoff. Mm -hmm. But well, with those uh, with those really nice works coming in, uh, and I know everybody was pretty – the barn connections were pretty confident sure about that. him uh, coming in and uh, doing really well after his break. And they should – he didn't get as long – within that 200, what, 293 days, I believe, it was um, – let me check. Let me check real quick. 258 days. Mm -hmm. They took their time getting him in into nice sa shape. So I think yeah. he's geared up pretty well coming into this. He came in a bit earlier than you probably would have expected for that kind of break. But let's go ahead okay. into our nightcap. This right. maiden claiming 20, six furlongs on the dirt. Uh, this – I, I I was scratching my head yeah. at this one, Keith. Yeah, scratching my head, and this is you know drives me nuts. Why I have no <laughs> hair? The balding spot it just keeps getting bigger and bigger. There. Yeah, yeah. Well, I appreciate that, but I mean, this is these races are just they're brutal, <laughs> and, 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 and I see a lot of them leading in and, and through the weekend into Monday, where I'm trying to kind of decipher and put the right odds on these horses. I hope we got them right. We're close. Bubba Chrome, but I look at this. I've got to take a shot here at a price. Mm -hmm. Bubba Chrome. Uh, Stumble break, ease the Colonial on the turf, maiden special weight to maiden claiming. We got a barn switch. But what I liked is the full siblings, a six-time winner on the dirt, was buried in debut on, on the turf and came back to run a credible second. Uh, and then I think broke its maiden a couple of races later on the dirt. So the same kind of angle. We'll see. And double bid. You've got a first-time gelding, uh, dropping in class as well. Some trouble out of the break. Why not? Why seven, not? eight, two, five. That's all we can give you for the night. If it's get out time, I'm going to key around the seven and the eight. <laughs> if it's get out, if it's get out yep. time, just throw, Which it probably will be. throw, throw everything on uh -huh. the, a bunch of the horses in this race. I think you can go any which way. That's our wrap up for uh -huh. our interesting races that we have going on good here card. in Breeders' Cup Day number one. But let's go ahead and talk a little bit about what's going on at Breeders' Cup in the lightning round. Well, Double Crown was mm. ran in the Maryland Million and turned right back around and won the Kelso Grade Two handicap at forty-two to one seven. You know, just going into what Cash's quotes were, it was the Maryland Million just a little bit too long. They thought the one-turn mile would be a good spot. They'd rather. It, he was entered. He was un entered at Delaware as well, and they opted to come here. He'd rather put them in good spots and travel than stay and have mediocre or poor spots. He had a five-horse field on Saturday up in New York, was hoping to just catch the board, but that horse just kept coming. And who did that horse nail and just surpass on the stretch was Baby Yoda. Another Maryland horse. Another Maryland right. horse. Just a launching pad for, uh, for, for talented individuals. A yep. lot going on uh -huh. here. Yeah, definitely a nice, a nice, uh, a nice piece of cash for a double <laughs> crown. Not about cash, but wanted to talk about quickly the nominations. They're looking for nominations right now for backstretch employees of the year. And his previous years will like recognize the backstretch employee in each racetrack based on the nomination. So that's Laurel and Pimlico. The deadline is December 15th. So be sure to get those in. So to submit a worker or to be considered, put their email, their name, position, and a summary of why they deserve this award to info at mdhorseman.com. Info at mdhorsemen.com. Now. 
It is Breeders' Cup Day today, race uh, the first day, a lot going on, and we've got a launch pad race mm -hmm. that usually produces a lot of champions. Let's see what happens for Congruent. He's got a tough go today. He's in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile. They saw they were halfway in between. He was entered for both the turf and the dirt. He just saw that there was so many entries in the turf race. Mm -hmm. He thought that they, they would be ineligible if they decide to go on the turf. Races on the dirt. He's automatically in. He's run well on the dirt. He's breathed better on the dirt and the turf. So like him better in that spot. Uh, a bit a tough go. There's a lot of. He is 30 to one on the board, mm -hmm. uh, but you have because you have National Treasure, a uh, Forte Cave Rock coming in. Uh, Cave Rock is uh, Cave Rock's going to be tough to beat uh, that Bob Baffert horse, but uh, best of luck to yeah. Congruent uh, mm -hmm. getting it getting it done here in the Laurel Fraternity and going ahead going ahead to the Breeders' Cup, the Laurel Fraternity historically being a launching pad for some champions in that career. And best of luck to a congruent and best of luck also to Keith Fusel's uh -oh. best bet and price play of the day today. What you got for us, Keith? We've been knocking on the, we've been hitting a few of these. So we, we've been on a little good He's, roll. You've I mean, been doing great. Came around first and second race, seven to 10. Yep. Crisper for Tim Woolley. Uh, yeah, sit back and make that run. Just needs the whole form like I talked about. I think he's got a little bit more f uh, flow in front of him today. Should make a good kick from the quarter pole home. Correct. Value play. Uh, again, uh, that is famished, correct? Famished. Yeah. That's, yeah, your, so. that's your value play under yeah, cord maker. Uh, yeah. Why not? Cord maker going to be short price and, and is the well-deserving favorite and is, you know, probably going to beat me, but uh, – there's some value in there, famished, if, uh, if, if something's just kind of – there's a little hiccup. But I saw that stat, and that really kind of – Four ninety nine. Yeah, four ninety nine. Without tax. Yeah, I think he was 11 for 11 in the money, second off the claim, Horacio DePaz. So there you go. Best of luck to everybody today. Enjoy Breeders' Cup Day 1. For, speaking of Horacio DePaz, yeah. he has a horse in today at the Breeders' Cup. Oh, okay. Underneath. Uh, so uh, it, he, he act, he's he got a really nice shot in that juvenile turf. I believe uh, there are some there are some international shippings, but I okay. like what I saw with Horacio's horse. He, f he fit the Hor Horacio's horse fits she the filly fits very uh -huh. very well uh, into that into that race. So best of luck to Horacio mm -hmm. both here in Maryland and over in Kentucky. And with that, we will go over to Dave Rodman for changes and scratches. All right, good luck.